Hi everybody, this is Boogas Reviews, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Gold Label DC vs. Vampires Robin figure. So before we take a look at Robin, let's take a look at the accessories that he comes with. So first up, he comes with your standard DC Multiverse base, but he stands pretty well on his own, so he doesn't really need it. Up next, you get his data file right there. And if you want to read that, go ahead and pause that now. That's really just a generic bio for Damien. Up next, he comes with a set of fisted hands. Up next, he comes with an alternate pointing left hand. Up next, he comes with an alternate open right hand. I do wish we would have got a set of open hands, or at least just an open left hand. Up next, he comes with accessory holding hands. Up next, he comes with a wooden stake. The handle has some really nice texturing, and the end of the stake has some really nice sculpted wood grain to it. That looks pretty cool. I do wish the grip was a little bit tighter on this, but I did put the sword in his hand, and it stretched it out just a little bit, so that is my fault. And finally, he comes with his sword. We've seen this used before on the Infinite Frontier Robin figure. The handle on that one was done in black, and this one's done in gold. And I have to say, I like the gold color a lot better. I just think that looks really good. So now let's go ahead and take a look at his head sculpt. So this is a very nice head sculpt for Vampire Robin. I think this looks really good. I actually think it looks even better than the comic art there. The comic art there looks a little bit goofy, but I really like the way the head sculpt on this figure looks. I think McFarlane Toys did an awesome job at sculpting it. The hair is sculpted very, very nicely. I do wish the mask around the eyes here would have been done in a matte black. It's very, very glossy. You can see the lights on my studio reflecting off of that. So yeah, I do wish that was more of a matte finish. All of the teeth are painted on very nicely. I actually think they're printed on, but it looks really good. The fangs are very noticeable there. That looks very awesome. And one thing I wanted to do, since I don't have a uh, regular Robin like this in my collection, is pop this head off. It pops off pretty easily. And pop the Infinite Frontier Robin's head sculpt on this. And man, that looks really nice. As I said, I don't have a good regular Robin in my collection, and I might actually leave it like this. Um, if you're wondering, I'm referring to this Robin right here. The head just pops off really easily, and uh, you're not going to break it or anything. So yeah, that's an easy head swap, and that looks fantastic. So if you want to do that, that also gives you an extra display option for this figure, and I think that looks great. This does reuse the body mold of the Robin figure that I just showed off. The difference is he does have sculpted on gloves right here. The other figure just had these hands and no gloves sculpted on. But yeah, this actually has new lower forearms there, and that looks really good. He's got some incredible texturing to the arms and legs of his suit there. The yellow on the belt looks really nice. I do wish that his outfit would have been trimmed in yellow. Though when I'm looking at the reference art here, it doesn't look like it's trimmed in yellow. It actually does look like it's trimmed in red. So it is accurate to the card art. I think in most iterations it has the yellow outline. But yeah, for this particular version, the red outline is accurate. He has some very, very cool texturing to the inside of his cape here on the yellow. It's very faint. But a certain way the light hits it, you can see that texturing on there, and that looks really cool. On the back of the cape, you get some really cool sculpted leather texturing. That looks very awesome. And then there are the boots, sculpted very nicely. You get some laces sculpted on down here. I do wish they would have been painted in red, but it's still sculpted very nicely. So now let's go over his articulation. And I have to say, this figure is very nicely articulated. I really thought with this piece over his shoulder and this soft overlay over top of the joints, his articulation would be hindered, but he has amazing articulation. So first up, he has a ball jointed head that can look up all the way. He can look down all the way. He can move his head side to side. He has shoulders that can move all the way out. Even with this cape piece, it does move out, so you can actually get his shoulders moving out all the way. He has butterfly joints that are just a little bit limited. He has swiveled the bicep, double jointed elbows that can bend in all the way, ball jointed wrists that can move up and down and spin all the way around. He has an ab crunch that can move back just a little bit, and he can crunch forward all the way. I was really surprised at that. So despite this overlay joint, he actually can crunch forward all the way. Though since it is this soft rubber, I wouldn't recommend doing that too much. You might actually split it. 
But yeah, he has some pretty nice articulation there. Can also move side to side very nicely and all the way around. He has ball jointed hips that can do a complete split. He can kick forward all the way. He can kick back all the way. He has a very slight thigh swivel. He has double jointed knees that can bend back all the way. And ball jointed ankles that can move down all the way, up all the way, spin all the way around, and toe articulation that can move up all the way. So now, let's do some size comparisons. So first up, here he is next to the previous version of himself, the Infinite Frontier version. And this new version's collars are way better than this one. Honestly, I'm not sure why I picked up the Infinite Frontier Robin, because I really don't like the collars on that outfit. Here he is next to Vampire Batman. Here he is next to Vampire Superman. Here he is next to Vampire Joker. Here he is next to Vampire Green Lantern. And here are some size comparisons with that regular Robin head. So first up, here he is next to regular Batman. Here he is next to Nightwing. Here he is next to Batgirl. Here he is next to Red Hood. And finally, there he is next to the Ninja Turtles vs. Batman version of himself. Now I can finally retire this very thin, very small figure that really did not scale with my DC Multiverse figures. So overall, I would highly recommend picking this up because McFarlane Toys did a phenomenal job on this. This is one of my favorite DC vs. Vampire figures so far, and you can actually mod this out to be a regular Robin if you want to. If you're like me and didn't have a regular Robin, then you can swap that infinite frontier head sculpt onto this one and have a perfect regular comic Robin. So yes, definitely pick this figure up, and maybe even pick up a second one. So that's my review. If you like this review, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.